Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Tronk and I'm a medical scientist. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a mini lesson on my favorite research topic, melanoma. So melanoma is a type of skin cancer that I study in the laboratory. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so this is a map of the world and I am from originally from Birmingham, which is a city in England. And when I was 10 years old, my mom, my two brothers and I, we moved to Utah, which is located in the Western uh, United States. And we moved there so we could live with my grandparents. And so here is a zoomed in map of Utah. Uh, Utah is known for its natural landscapes, such as the Great Salt Lake. We also have multiple national parks, such as Arches, Bryce Canyon, or Zion National Park. Where I lived in Ogden, uh, we have a lot of mountains where we can go hiking in the spring, summer, and fall, or skiing and sledding in the winter. And I went to college at Weber State University, which is about a 10 minute drive from my grandparents' house. And I majored in zoology, which is the study of animals. And um, I'm currently at the University of Utah where I'm in the MD PhD program. So this is a dual doctorate degree program that when you graduate, you get both an MD and a PhD. So, so far I've already completed two years of medical school and I just finished up my PhD, which took about four years. And my PhD is in oncological sciences, which is just a fancy way of saying that I study cancer and I have two years of medical school left before I graduate. So throughout my time in the MD-PhD program, uh, my research focus has been on melanoma, which is a particularly relevant for me because I'm from Utah, uh, because Utah actually has the highest incidence of melanoma in the country. So for me, it's really important to study melanoma so that we can come up with good treatments and cures. So before I go into melanoma, I want to talk first about melanocytes. So melanocytes are located uh, predominantly in the skin. So this is a cartoon image of the skin. Um, this part is our surface of the skin that, is in, that you can see. And then this part is the deeper part um, where your bones and muscles are located. And so the melanocytes are located in this wavy part of the skin and they are these brown cells here. Um, this is a zoomed in version of a melanocyte. And so what melanocytes do is they produce this substance called melanin. And melanin is what gives us pigment or color and gives us our unique hair color, our skin color and our eye color. So melanocytes are also important in protecting our skin from ultraviolet radiation or ultraviolet light. So this is a type of light that we can't see that comes from the sun or from tanning beds. And so when our skin is exposed to ultraviolet light, this actually causes da DNA damage to our skin. And so our melanocytes react to this by trying to protect us by making more pigment. And this is what makes our skin turn tan. So when we get a tan, this is our body's way of telling us that we are damaging our skin. And we often can't see the damage from UV radiation until it's too late. So here's an example of my skin. Uh, this is an image of my normal face. And then this is an image of my face taken with a special camera that can detect UV damage. So um, the black spots represent the uh, areas of UV damage that we can't see um, on the surface. And so you can see that even though I, uh, my skin looks pretty clear in this picture, you can see that I have quite a bit of UV damage um, in my skin that I've accumulated over time. And when we have too much UV damage, um, this can lead to permanent changes in our skin, such as wrinkles, and splotchy changes to the color of our skin called sunspots, and also sunburns, which are really painful, and most dangerous of all, skin cancer, um, such as melanoma. So cancer is when your cells grow uncontrollably, and there are many different types of cancer, such as lung cancer or brain cancer, and melanoma is a type of cancer that comes from melanocytes. So melan meaning melanocyte and oma meaning tumor. 
So sometimes um, melanocytes can cluster in our skin, uh, making moles, which are totally fine, um, not dangerous. But then when these melanocytes grow and invade deeper into the skin, as you can see here, this is what's called melanoma. And when melanoma is confined to the skin, it's really easy to treat because we can just cut it out with surgery. Um, but when melanoma spreads to other parts of the body, such as to the liver, to the lungs, or to the brain, um, this is what makes melanoma very dangerous to your health. So melanoma has been studied pretty um, extensively. And what we know is that about half of patients who are diagnosed with melanoma have mutations in the tumor cells in this BRAF gene. And so what are mutations? So these are changes that occur in the DNA. And so you can compare DNA to kind of like a computer code. So computer codes tell your computer what to do. Um, DNA does the same thing except uh, for your body. So instead of using ones and zeros that computers use, our DNA uses A's, C's, T's, and G's. And so um, looking at this original sequence here, um, a mutation occurs when one of these letters or, or multiple of these letters can change to different letters. So for example, this T over here has mutated to a C. And so these changes can lead to um, changes to the way that our cells function and potentially can lead to cancer. So taking BRAF as an example in melanoma, um, so BRAF normally functions to um, regulate how a cell grows. And so when it's normally functioning, we have normal cell growth. When we have a mutation in BRAF, this leads BRAF to go out of control and tells the cells to keep growing and not stop. So this is what leads to cancer. So because we know that the BRAF mutation does this, we next wanted to know if we can potentially make a drug to block this mutation so that the cancer can't grow anymore. So this is why science is so important. And the first question that scientists asked is what does this BRAF mutant look like? And what about it is different from other cells that are normal? And so once scientists figured this out, um, they designed a drug that specifically fits into the BRAF mutant and leaves the normal cells alone. And so next, we wanted to know if this medicine can kill melanoma cells. And so scientists grew melanoma cells in a dish. So this is the dish and these gray um, shapes here are the melanoma cells. And then added this BRAF mutant inhibitor. And they found that when they added this inhibitor in, the melanoma cells died, which is great. And so the next question um, is, will this work in a living organism with melanoma? So in cancer research, um, we commonly use mice to test new drugs before we test in humans. Um, so scientists gave the medicine that had uh, two mice that had melanomas. So these are the melanomas growing on these mice. And they found that after treating these mice with this new medicine, that these tumors were able to shrink, which is really good news. And so now we wanted to know if this works in humans too. So physician scientists um, tested this drug in patients that have this uh, BRAF mutation in their melanomas and found that it did have some effectiveness in shrinking their tumors. Um, so now this, uh, because of all this work of the scientists and the physician scientists, um, this medication can now be prescribed for melanoma patients with BRAF mutations. Another type of therapy that has been tested to work really well in melanoma is called immunotherapy. So immunotherapy works by using the patient's own immune system to fight the cancer. And so in all of our bodies, we have immune cells, which are like our body's own protectors. And when we get invaded with different germs, such as bacteria and viruses, um, the immune cells are able to fight them off by essentially gobbling them up. And so there are immune cells that also recognize and protect us from cancer cells. Um, but sometimes the immune cells have certain molecules on them that prevent them from seeing the melanoma cells. So 
if they can't see the melanoma cells, they can't attack them. And so the melanoma cells are able to keep growing. So another type of medication called immunotherapy is able to um, bind to these, um, these molecules on the immune cells that prevent them from seeing the melanoma cells so that now these immune cells can see the melanoma cells and gobble them up. And just like they did with the BRAF mutant medicine, scientists first needed to test whether or not this medication will work in mice. And so they treated these mice that have these uh, melanoma tumors with immunotherapy and found that it did shrink the tumors, which is great. And it, um, then they tested this immunotherapy in humans or human patients that have melanoma and found that the a substantial portion of these melanoma patients were able to see that their tumor shrunk. So the scientists that um, discovered immunotherapy have actually won Nobel Prizes. And so their discoveries have been a really big deal and have saved lots of lives. And so what's next? And what's next for melanoma research and what are things that you can do now or when you get older to help fight against cancer? So the first thing that we all can do is try our best to lower our chances of getting melanoma. So we can do this by protecting our skin from the damaging UV rays that can come from the sun by utilizing this slip, slop, slap, wrap, play method, which means slipping on a long sleeve shirt or long pants when you're outside on a sunny day, wearing sunscreen or slopping on sunscreen on um, skin that's not covered by your clothes, slapping on a wide-brimmed hat that also covers your ears and your neck, um, wearing sunglasses that have 100% UV protection because your eyes can also be damaged by too much UV exposure, and also playing in the shade whenever you can, when it's sunny outside. The sec second thing that you can do is pay attention to the changes that occur in your skin and also encourage the people in your homes to do the same thing especially the adults. So you can follow the ugly duckling rule. So the ugly duckling rule here, meaning that if you see a mole or a spot on your skin that doesn't look like all of your other spots on your skin, then it might be best to, to have a doctor take a look at it to make sure that it's okay. Um, and finally, research. So this is what scientists do. Uh, we ask questions and answer them by doing research. So for example, for my projects on melanoma, I wanna know if we can combine these different melanoma medications that I'd shown you earlier uh, to see if they work better at killing the tumors. Uh, so I look at melanoma cells in a dish and also treat mice with melanomas with these different medicines. Um, some other questions that, um, that we can ask are looking at these medications and other types of cancers. Um, discovering new medications that target these other mutations. So there are so many questions about melanoma that still need to be answered, and it's up to us as medical scientists and to you as potential future medical scientists to help find answers to these questions and make new discoveries. So with that, I will end here. I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and I want to thank you for watching this mini lesson with a medical scientist. Bye.